North Central Pennsylvania, Susquehannock uh, State Forest, in a little town called uh, Cross Fork. And I believe this is Kettle Creek here. A lot of uh, rain yesterday from the um, leftovers of Tropical Storm Fred. But uh, we probably are going to be rain free today, but it's kind of cloudy, overcast. Um, we're doing the uh, Hammersley Wild Area loop trail two days one night and uh this is the second largest wild area in pennsylvania after Kahana. it's the most remote area in the state that you can get from any kind of road not even a forest road goes through the hammers of wild area on the trip we got uh myself and uh tara and jenkins and uh I guess Becky hit a deer in the car on the way here, so she's not coming. A little road walk before we get to the uh, trailhead. Should be over that way. All right, we got these two large creeks coming together right here. So we got uh, orange blazes. It's part of the uh, Susquehannock Trail System, the STS, which I'll be doing the entire thing next month so I believe the, the section we're going to be going today is part of the STS and then we'll uh, be hiking out tomorrow along a power line and the Twin Sisters Trail so here's the uh, Twin Sisters Trail we'll be coming out that way tomorrow we're headed this way today I made the turn back there at the Twin Sisters Trail uh, there were no more blazes after that and uh I'm hoping this is the trail. It's uh, not very obvious. Some of these sections where the trail might be. All right, we stopped and got the maps out compared it to the GPS and uh, we did make a wrong turn. We should have turned up the Twin Sisters Trail, headed up there for a half a mile before we made our left hand turn. So we probably tacking on an extra half a mile of walking here. Here's the trail challenge, is to find the smiley face moss. Alright, uh, we're 2.67 miles in on the day. Probably about three quarters of a mile was, uh, we made that wrong turn, but uh, as soon as we turned off the road, it was pretty much two miles straight uphill. So I'm getting into this thick mountain laurel here. The trail's getting hard to see. Uh, anyways, I got a song of the day. I'm going with uh, Car Wash, I'm pretty sure it is uh, Rose Royce. And my legs are just completely drenched now from coming through all this. Let's see. Right, here's our turn that we were looking for. Continuing on the uh, STS on the Elkhorn Trail. So, Twin Sisters right there, Yellow Blazes. And that's where we'll be coming out tomorrow. The STS has these uh, mile markers. And the trail is pretty much the storm. We're coming down off the top of the mountain. And we're doing this way over here. There's some small creek running back to the way. It's just been a small water for us over here. Nice. We're coming down to the very bottom of the valley. I believe this is the uh, creek that we're going to be camping in later today. It's a lot of Okay, so I think, looking at the map, this is called Hammersley Fort. This creek. And, uh, the trail report that I saw said stinging nettle a lot. And uh, this valley is not kidding. It's pretty much picked the poison. Walk through the water or walk through the nettles or both. And, uh, and my legs are 
watching like crazy right now. I gotta go over there. I don't see any place in the way. Keep my feet dry here. So just gotta go for it. I'm using up to my pretty much my knees. At least that cool water helped cool some of the stain out. Yeah, that was a fish. <laughs> yeah. This creek over here is not the one we crossed. This one's a, a bit larger. And uh, I hope we're not going to have to get across that because that's some uh, raging rapids. And it's a pretty significant uh, creek there. And that, that might be Hammer's E4 up there. I have a sneaking suspicion that we're going to have to cross that somewhere. Like some class three or class four rapids. There's campsites down there. Look like a pretty nice one too. I think, I think I see see some rock chairs down there. Yep. You guys, we might have to be coming back to that one if we got to cross that creek. Okay, there's a rattlesnake right next to the trail. I walked right past it, didn't even see it. It's right there. Here's the trail. Here's the trail. Here's the rattlesnake. Okay, maybe just under three feet long. Uh, it's one o'clock. Yeah, there's no way we're going to cross this if that's where the trail wants us to go. Okay, fortunately, we got away from that main creek and our water crossing is only this smaller creek here. Still moving pretty good though. Definitely don't want to fall on here. It's a wildlife day. Right on the trail. Been doing a little bit of side hilling through this area. Nowhere near as bad as uh, we're near as bad as Chuck Kuyper. So there is a rattlesnake right on the trail. I still don't see it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I see it now. Rattlesnake. Oh, yeah. Is it starting to go yellow? It's a little bit bigger than the last one. This is about three foot. Yeah, so that's the trail is right there. It's laying right next to the trail. Fortunately, we got some room to get around. Fresh bear poop this time. This morning. Well, here's the issue. Let's get a trail goes across to that island and then across again. Well, at least you can see the bottom here. It looks like it's moving a little bit faster over there. Yeah. This is like the back channel here. Just noticed this funky mushroom growing on top of this tree. We're still undecided about what to do. So Jenkins went across to the island. This this back channel is not too bad, but he said it's moving pretty good and it's pretty deep on the other side. Uh, so we're still debating what to do. Our options are if we can camp on that island. Um, and hope the water goes down in the morning, but then we'll have like a 17 mile hike out of here tomorrow. Uh, unless we turn around and go back the way we came in. We're six and a half miles in basically right now. Our other option is to go back, about a mile and a half back the trail. There was a pretty nice campsite. We go back and camp there for the night and then just walk out tomorrow morning. So we came in. I don't know what we're doing yet. Okay, we're over here on the island. Obviously, this is a uh, the water was coming through yesterday when everything was all flash floods. And uh, we thought about this log, but it just looks way too slippery. And if you fall in there, you're screwed. Um, so, yeah, you see the back channel? That was only like knee deep. Um, we're going to go down here and look for somewhere else to cross, but it's not looking promising. I think we're going to have to have a change of plans. So it's not deep on the pole. It's just like shaking the pole. 
moving so fast. Okay. All right, we decided it's just going to be too dangerous to cross this one. So our plan is um, we're going to go back uh, about a mile and a half back. It was a really nice camp, so we're going to go back and camp there. And then tomorrow we'll just uh, screw around maybe on that Twin Sisters trail. You still there? Okay. This is what we were keeping an eye out when you were coming back. This rattlesnake is snake that's sitting here. Yeah. Still over here. So we think this might be the thing that's called the Hammers the Pool, where uh, when it's not uh, raising rapids, you can, it's a good swimming hole. This could be it. And this rattlesnake is still over here. Now it's coiled up. Not giving any kind of warning rattle. It's just slightly moving its tail. Camps right down there with uh, rock chairs, tables. But it's only 2:30, so we're going to keep on hiking um, before I end up at a uh, dry campsite. So we're going to be taking water up with us. All right, we just stopped and uh, camped up here. We got uh, this is the last water source. We're headed back up on the top of the mountain, so it's about 600 feet of. Uh, climb to get back to the top. And, um, yeah, we just find a dry campsite up there so we got as much water as we can carry. And, uh, this is pretty wild. This cherry tree growing right through the middle of that. There we are. Very nice. Just as nice coming back up here as it was coming down. Uh, just a few, just a few minutes ago, we heard uh, what sounded like a big rock being dropped over in the woods pretty close to us. So, it's either Bigfoot or more than, more than likely a bear flipping over a rock looking for some food. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it was. I'm going to go through this real heavy uh, mountain wall section. We are on the Twin Sisters Trail now. And, uh, we decided what the plan is. It looks like it's about four miles up to this meadow. We're going to try to get there and uh, find somewhere to camp. Um, we do have, between the three of us, we got two hammocks and one tent, so we're not going to be able to set up hammocks, obviously, in the meadow. So we're going to look for something, like maybe right on the edge. Okay, good to know there is a water source here in this pine forest. We're 11.75 miles on the day. And, um, yeah, it looks like a... That place that we're trying to get to is probably going to be uh, around 15 miles on the day. Oh, out of the pine forest and into the hardwood forest. So yeah, that little stream back there, I don't remember seeing it on the map. So I don't know how reliable it might be um, during dry weather. Right, we, missed, uh, we missed the turn when we came out into that uh, hardwood forest. Um, the trail actually actually continues over here through a little bit more pine forest and then the, now the hardwood forest starts again. So uh, anyways, we're going to go probably another three miles to the uh, meadow and then uh, if we can't find anything over there we're coming back to the water source and uh, camping there. Is this not the meadow? This is a meadow. I don't think it's the meadow. So after the forest fire, most of the uh, trees never grew back up here. It's got some pretty nice views. This is the uh, meadow that we were talking about looking for before. Red ants all through here. There's a rattlesnake all balled up right there. And there's the trail. 
I don't like how close that is to camp. <laughs> All right, 10 to 8, and our camp is set up. Everything's ready to go. And uh, so, uh, let's see, I got third line hung. Cat hole pre dug for tomorrow. Alcohol chilling over here in the creek. And I'm uh, about to start dinner. So, I got two experiments going on over here. I am trying this recipe here. Uh, kind of homemade one that was an Alpine air recipe. I'm kind of making my own version. So I got uh, Andrew Stoker beans, um, rice, and dehydrated pineapple in here. Then I'm going to put this chicken in with it with fajita flavored sauce. My other experiment is instead of using these stinky ass uh, SBQs for this, my stove, I'm going to try some uh, Vaseline cotton balls and see how that works. Uh, Our morning of day two. Got up around seven. It's almost eight now. We're all packed up. Uh, ready to go. <coughs> um, we're headed back to the parking lot. It should be about three miles and then we're going to decide what to do from there. Um, 64 degrees right now and that was the low. It got up to 84 yesterday. And uh, I don't want the, the rain kill because right up here we got a set at uh, about a half mile section of uh, Mount Laurel and I'm trying to keep my shorts dry through there. I'm going to get all covered in dew. But uh, this little stream was great to listen to last night. Um, didn't really hear too much in the way of all that. Right, getting kind of interesting coming down this hill. Starting to get into uh, the fog. The whole valley is fogged over that way. Finally on the road walk. We just came down off the top of the mountain behind me here. And uh, it was a descent of roughly 900 feet in just over a mile. It wasn't terrible. Uh, it's pretty, it's not really steep. It's just long. Uh, but anyways, uh, I forgot to look and see what our mileage is. Oh, we're at the, right around three miles right now. So just this little road walk, probably not even a half a mile like that. Uh, so anyways, a trip report for the Hammersley Wild area. Um, now, I'll have to wait for this car to go by. Okay, so here's my trip report for Hammersley Wild Area. Uh, I'm going to put the map up right here. So we started at the bottom of the map. And, uh, or actually the tracking, I guess. We started at the bottom. Headed north. Made the, the left on staying on the STS, Orange Blazes. And made that right. Took us down into the valley and uh, that's where we had to turn around. We couldn't ford across Hammerly Fork. So we turned around, went back to the uh, intersection and made the left, headed north again onto the Twin Sisters Trail. Hiked out to that uh, big meadow where the old uh, forest fire was at. And then we turned back around from there, headed back south and we camped where the um, orange arrow is. So as far as the trail itself, um, and there's some bear scat right there on the road. Um, yeah, wildlife. Uh, we did see a lot of signs of bears. Uh, saw the three rattlesnakes. Uh, and none of them gave any kind of warning buzz. Fortunately, Hawkeye up there, <laughs> uh, Jenkins, he spotted all three of them. First two, or the first one I walked right past, he was behind me. Uh, the second one, he was in front. It was a, he saw the one that was on the trail, or I'd have probably stepped on it. Uh, and then the third one, I was in front again, and uh, I walked right past it. It was right by our campsite. Um, stinging nettles on the STS section. A lot of stinging nettles. This is uh, late August. Um, definitely going to get your feet wet, whether there's you know flash flood warnings or not. And um, 
if you're you know doing the STS. Uh, another thing to be aware of that like I said that orange arrow where we camped at if you head north of there on the Twin Sisters Trail it's about a half a mile of uh, it's yellow blazes through that section they're very faded very easy to get lost you've really got to pay attention for the blazes for that half a mile I could see somebody definitely getting lost in that section also that campsite that we stayed at on the Twin Sisters Trail that was the only water source we saw on the entire Twin Sisters Trail um, there was a few puddles down toward that uh, big meadow but uh, you know just standing water Seriously, I don't know how people live out here. It's been about a, an hour. It was about an hour drive from here to the next available Dollar General. There's no, not even uh, any restaurants or nothing. It might, might be like a country restaurant or something out here. But I don't know where these people get their supplies at. All right, so here is one of these major creeks. I don't know if it's the one that we couldn't get across yesterday Let's see it down there still moving pretty good but yeah what I would recommend is uh, if you're gonna do, do the STS like I'm doing next next month um, see if you can find a water gauge for the Hammersley fork because that water is too high or whatever it's gonna change your plans Just like it did for us okay I don't know what uh, I'm not sure what uh, Jenkins and Tara are doing. They're talking about um, doing some roadwalk somewhere. I don't, I'm not sure what they're doing. But uh, yeah, I got a four and a half hour drive back to Pittsburgh. I mean, it's still early yet, but uh, yeah, there's uh, 18 miles or whatever, 18 point whatever we did yesterday. It's got my hips hurting a little bit. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this one up. Coming back into Cross Fork. The biggest little town in the world little cemetery so we just got this uh one final road walk across the bridge over here and we think back at the car i just saw the sign that this one here this is kettle creek pretty large creek little store here it is open huh. I wonder if they got restaurants. That's a bar there. Guess ice cream fishing tackle. I don't see anything for restaurants. So I gotta remember, we come back next month, that this is where the uh, STS goes. I guess it's up, maybe it goes up that driveway looking thing right there Let's see if I see any more blazes down this way and then in right there so the parking area is right down this uh, road here this is a firehouse lane right behind me here you can see there's a um, signboard thing that uh, has some maps and stuff on it as well. There are some maps you can grab on the other side of the, of the signboard. A uh, good, really good thing to know here is at the parking lot. This is the uh, forestry maintenance building behind me. There is a uh, bathrooms back here. Pretty decent. Uh, I got a bench in there if you want to change clothes or whatever. Uh, and there is right here a, uh, a water pump. I don't know that it's potable water but uh, yeah, anyways, um, with that, I'm going to call this one a wrap. Oh, check it out. I got the picnic table down there, too. But, uh, yeah, like I was going to say, call this one a wrap. Uh, it's going to be well over an hour until I get to the nearest McDonald's. And I got a four and a half hour drive to get back home. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching.